So this is what I'm using, Elmer's disappearing, well it's got washable school glue, disappearing purple. This is, um, just a second, 6 grams, 0 0.21 ounces. This is quite good on heat beds, this is what I've always used until I got my polycarbonate sheet. And this is about out this one. So basically you twist the bottom like so and it pushes the glue out. It's like a glue stick. Well it is a glue stick when it goes on purple and that colour disappears after about 20 minutes. The, uh, put this down here because I'm going to dig out what's left of the glue stick oops so there's like the container of the glue stick that holds the glue stick in and there's like a screw thread in there keep that in don't lose that Basically I'm just scraping around with it. You could use a screwdriver or something. Just let me move this over a little bit. I'm scraping that out, pushing it out, sort of levering it out as much as possible. It is a bit sticky as it should be. So don't lose this part here, because this part is wanted, it's got the threads on. I'm actually going to put this in a bottle of water. I have some, any, like, end bits of my glue sticks, I've always put them in water until I get quite a few, and then I shake them up. And it dissolves to a certain extent in the water with some wood glue. Um, and then I use that for on my heat beds. That is before I started using polycarbonate. Polycarbonate has been great for me, just putting in PLA. I can't talk about any other uh, types of filaments. I've only ever used polycarbonate. Well, this is getting to a point where it wants washing out now. I'll just scrape out this final bit. My printer is on, you might hear a noise, that's not my printer, actually it's a PSU fan I've got to power something, I can't even remember what's powering now, 12 volt PSU fan, like it's totally separate from the printer really. Right, I'm going to rinse that out, well wash it out, that should dissolve some warm water, I think I'll come back when I've done that, so that's that part. That's pretty clean, but I'll probably rinse this out as well. Don't throw any parts out. So there's a the glue. That's roughly what it looks like. Yuck. Looks a bit gross actually. Well I've washed them out. Still a bit damp. I had to use a cotton bud to get down inside here to, there's like three um, like guides I'm going to call them. There was a bit of this Elmer's glue stick on there but that's pretty clean. That's pretty clean that washed out and again I'm using cotton bud to get inside so you don't want to lose that. Just screw that in. Oh that's out, that's in. So you can probably get an idea how it's going to work. So as this turns on the servo sort of control it pushes forward and that's what this pusher plate I'm actually printing it out now. So the servo will turn and push forward or push back. There's, um, 
I'm not sure how much travel there is but we can estimate there's about 50 millimetres of travel going to be there and you're going to get a bit of like gear in because this is almost like a worm gear inside like a screw thread inclined plane idea see the orange bit there So you've got all that, so it takes quite a few turns to get that to come forward, so don't lose that bit. And I don't think the cap's needed, but I'm going to keep it for now, we put that up there to drip dry anymore. I'll come back when I've printed out the, um, the pusher part. So this is what I normally do with my glue stick ends. It's just water in here with some wood glue. Oh, this has been... I'm trying to hold on. So basically it's just Elmer's glue stick. Just the ends, like the ends that come off. Usually get this you usually get a bit of glow in the end here and take that off, pop it in the water with some, as I say it's got wood glow in the water give it a bit of a shake and I just leave it to stand to like dissolve and the idea there was to put this on the on the heat bed as a I just like to watch here parts to the heat bed. But I've never used this so I don't know what it's like. But some do say, some swear by wood glue. And I would swear by Elmer's glue stick as well if I wasn't using my polycarbonate sheet I've got for PLA. That's worked great. No problems there. Just normal problems if you, you know, you have to get the Z probe height level somewhere near I think it's a bit more forgiving as well right waiting for this part to print well here is the part I'm calling a pusher because it pushes <laughs> um, does these grooves in to match up the grooves inside this is a remix I'll put some details down below what's made for this uh, Elmer's glue stick Thing. Let me screw this up a bit first. Ah, let's see. And screw back down. Now this has been made the wrong length. So I'll just show you that if I can. So see how that's turning when I'm pressing down. So it's taking linear motion into rotational motion. And even though it's go, you know, I'm going to print this shorter, it should still do the same. I don't know if there's any way around that apart from the, the sort of hole and top of the servo and such like. So after a bit of experimentation I found out that this was quite stiff sometimes to put into here. What I've found out the easiest way to do it, well with this Elmer's glue stick, is this has like chamfers on there and also these notches in the edge. So if you line up as accurately as can the notches in here with the notches in the edge and then because of the chamfers, you can almost feel, see it bumps out a bit there, then bumps back in, and when it bumps back in you know it's, well, lining up, as long as you've lined up the, the things, and then it moves quite easy. So there's about 50 millimetres of travel there I think. Still waiting to print out the shorter one. I'm printing out the 
a test piece for the base actually. Well, this is a bit short of one, so you now it goes down all the way to the edge. There's a slight gap there, well, a gap between the edge and the top there. Remember, there's no limit switches on this, so I suppose something you could add if you need to. So it's just going to rely on the server stopping at the right time. So that that's out. Oh, well, that's out as far as I would want to go with it, and that is. I'm going to call it 30 millimeters. Can we see that? Because even now uh, we want it in a little bit more than that. So that's about 30 millimeter throw there. This is just a test piece I was doing to see how well it fit. I had to cut it to actually get it on because there is a bit of a a lip around here like a bit of an edge so to get it on so on a proper thing it will have a gap in and then I'll pin on and well I'll show you that when I've done it and then it'll have the cogwheel like a cogwheel on there the server will have a cog on. I'll just show you again that if I press that, see. So if there's a lot of weight on it, it might. What would you call it? Backlash? Backspin? Hmm. Well, this is at this sort of stage where it's pretty much complete, apart from fitting the servo bracket, which will go on here and this cogwheel which will go on the servo like locks into the teeth on the top up there just making sure you can see that this is pretty tight with, even without any balls in but I've put some holes in for balls now this can only push it's got a 30 millimetre throw so you only want to fill the syringe 30 millimetres And then as this turns, see, I'm turning that quite easy, I'm not putting a lot of force on there, it doesn't need a lot of force to turn it, so it pushes forward and obviously squeeze, squeezes any liquid baby food out, that's the baby food. See, if I keep going there, see, it's trying to push this up. So actually that can go a little bit further. Go about four or five millimeters, it could go about four or five millimeters further there, but I think I'll leave it as that. But that's one reason we will we'll, we'll want to like put some balls on there and lock that. I'll just show you, just pull this out. See, I've took the label off, it's a bit of a nuisance taking the label off because it tends to leave sticky stuff on the uh. pit stick, well sort of glue stick, should say glue stick really, this is Elmer's glue stick or was um, and that's uh, a look there, so two balls that fasten this cogwheel on and this can grip on this bottom here, it has some bumps on there to bump in the grooves using a bronze PLA quite nice if you're interested just PLA bronze and this is a little bit sometimes I have to wiggle it about a bit to get, sort of get in there but it does go in and that's pretty tight even without things so you fill it full of you'd have to fill it full of 30 millimeters it does have measurements on here One, two, 
30 millimeters. This is um, oops. This is um, an inkjet refill syringe. That's all it is. From an old it's filling your old uh, your inkjets. GR inkjet. Oh. Most syringes, I think, about so long as they're not too big, will do. Or too small. And I'm turning that very, very easily indeed. Obviously, this will, this will like lock out. There's no limit switches on this, so it will rely, will just rely on the Arduino cord to stop the forwards and backwards so to speak and that's it I would recommend probably having this up that way because then you can see the in this case at least you can see the markings on there the measurement markings you know how much you've gone through now I have thought of one issue with this is that and in the code by the way I tend to have it go forward so it's going to push a little bit of drop out and then it's going to turn back a little bit just to relieve the pressure a bit. It doesn't actually move the syringe back, which is a bit of a shame. The syringe doesn't ever move back unless somebody puts a spring on it, but then you're going to need more pressure pushing forward. But having a spring on is one idea. But that puts that nozzle there more at the bottom. So any liquid coming out will drop out. But the main issue is that that's open all the time. So I'm a bit worried about air getting in there, but that's quite a small opening. I reckon about one and a half to millimetres there. That's without a needle on or any sort of inkjet thing you can get. I'll just show you that again. Show you that. And I can turn it. Can I turn that upside down? Is there enough friction in there? Yes, there is enough friction. That's just relying on friction. And the fact I'm pushing on it. If I take the weight off, will it fall out? Probably, yeah. But it could possibly go upside down as long as you've got the, the contact made. Right, so that's that. I'll come back when I'm pinning out the bracket now, actually. for the bracket to make that shown and then I want to go down a bit more actually on about there this cogwheel as I say is servo here I'm waiting for a continuous servo which is what is wanted well this is I suppose an update I've done Quite a few minor modifications. You might notice I've changed the clamp part up here. So that screws are coming in here because I found that this was uh, not very good as a clamp the other way. And but the main change is on the back end where I originally intended to put a servo, a continuous servo, I'm going to use one of these steppers. See that? 24BYJ48 just one of these cheap sort of steppers you can get off eBay that's I think easier to control and it should have enough power I have done a power test on these before and uh, they're quite powerful actually for a small stepper they've got gears inside 5 volt stepper but basically obviously that let me pull this so you fill the syringe up. This might want um, like an air pipe putting on there. Only want about 30, well, one, two, three marks, I think it is. I'm going to say 30 millilitres, but I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, it is. Those are millilitres, claim to be. And then as the servo turns under control of a Arduino screws a screw mechanism in this old 
Elmer's glow stick container and pushes the syringe forward. You can see that obviously be under control of the servo just to push enough to push one drop out, out at a time. That's the idea. One problem with this is that going backwards doesn't sort of take off any, well it relieves a bit of pressure off here I suppose, but doesn't sort of pull the syringe backwards. It just leaves a gap there. Hope you can see all that. So that's, this isn't a cogwheel, it is meant there to turn if you want to turn it by hand. That's what that wheel is for. And that's basically as far as it will go. That'll be under control of the Arduino. Don't plan to put any limit switches on again. So change from a continuous servo which would turn to this small stepper. Oops. Should have a bigger washer on there. So plan to probably put both the Arduino Uno I plan to use on here which will have a like a stepper shield, motor shield on. This is, I've forgotten if I showed you this, this is just off an inkjet printer. Syringe. JR inkjet it says there. Very hard for me to know if this is getting in the camera. But I think that's okay. Don't think there's much else I can say. Been through quite a few iterations. And it has not been tested so yet. So I'm going to finish off there because I am waiting for the control box. I do have an Arduino Uno ready waiting and some code that will want developing to a certain extent. Uh, this is bronze PLA. Still waiting for the like shield for that, like the motor shield. I have that on order. So that's just basically the pit stick, well it's, it could be a pit stick but I'm using the Elmer's glow stick empty container and obviously there would, I plan to have some buttons on the unit as well so you can electrically turn it backwards or forwards than having to turn it by hand like I'm doing here get a basic idea there. Pop this, well, fill the syringe up. Might need a one-way valve in this, I'm not sure. No, like an air pump one-way valve. Fill the syringe up. Pop it in. Have the thing facing down, which means you can see. Again, electrical control, you might be able to push push the uh, thing to get enough tension on it and then leave it so that every every four hours that is basically the feeding time for fry if you're using liquid fry which this is basically built for it'll turn it in just enough to push the syringe forward one drop and wait four hours and turn a bit more to push it another drop that is the basic idea how well this will work don't know until I get the, um, well I could test that to a certain extent by manually doing it but I won't in this video. So just show you around again. Quite a nice uh, colour this bronze PLA. No, Non-clog PLA, that's what I ask for off eBay, just cheap stuff. Just be in case I forget when you when you're drilling a hole in in here for this 2.5 or 3 millimeter bolt here to go into, grip this with a pair of pliers. This can this actually fastens on this wheel, so that can come off this wheel. Grip that with a pair of pliers, so it 
because otherwise it might crack. I mean I've had a couple of these crack. Right, I'll finish off there and I'll wait until I'll probably it gets uh, my motor shield, step out motor shield.